Last Friday at the State House, mere minutes before the entire legislative session was about to go into a two week COVID induced recess, the House Education Committee decided they would gavel in for a quick meeting. A meeting, according to Representative Steve Birch, who is a member of that committee, that was unorthodox from the onset. According to Birch, there was nothing on the committee agenda the day before because they all knew they were going to go home due to increasing coronavirus cases on the House side of the Capitol. In fact, there were four members of the Education Committee already out sick, three for being infected with the virus and a fourth for being exposed to it. Two of those confirmed cases, the chair of the Education Committee, Representative Lance Clow, and the vice chair, Representative Ryan Kirby. Sitting in their place, Representative Judy Boyle, acting as chair. Burt said late Thursday night, three routing slips were suddenly added to the agenda. Routing slips are bills before they become bills. That part wasn't included in the Schoolhouse Rock episode, but I digress. Burt said when he arrived on Friday, he asked about one of those items, a racist and sexist concepts bill, and learned it was written not by a legislator, but by a man named Edward Humphreys. The same Ed Humphreys, who is the Region 4 chair of the state Republican Party. The same Ed Humphreys, Burt said, he saw setting up a camera in the committee room to record himself presenting this item. Birch was then notified the acting chair, Representative Boyle, had made it clear these items would be introduced without discussion or even questions being allowed from committee members. After all, they were trying to outrun COVID and get out of the state house, so no time for questions. It was at that point, after the three late night additions to the agenda, after finding out one of those items was written by a political party member, after being told they couldn't ask questions, well, Birch said that's when the three Democrats on the committee, himself, Representative Sally Toon and Representative John McCrosty, skipped the committee meeting in protest. They said they want to know part of this. Acting Chair Boyle went ahead with it. A school community council's bill passed through. A high school coaching bill made it through. And then five minutes into the seven minute meeting, Ed Humphreys stepped to the podium. Madam Chairwoman, esteemed members of uh, the committee, thank you for granting me the short opportunity to speak with you today. I'm Ed Humphreys from Eagle, Idaho. I'm here today representing uh, my son and my preborn baby girl. And for their sake, I would like to formally present RS 28866 for consideration by this body. This bill would prohibit teaching racist and sexist concepts in Idaho public schools. So I appreciate your, your consideration. I hope that uh, you'd take it and introduce it. Mr. Humphreys said 83 words. That's it. Just 83 words were said about this item in the waning moments of a seven minute, 10 second meeting before it was accepted without a single dissent to become a full fledged bill. Remember, none of the Democrats were there to vote against it. So let's go back to what we learned from Schoolhouse Rock about how a bill becomes a law. And it goes like this. Some folks back home decide they want a law passed, so they call a local representative. And they say, you're right, there ought to be a law. And they sit down and write me out and introduce me to committee and I become a bill on Capitol Hill or the Idaho State Capitol. While that oversimplification might miss a few steps, Representative Burt said, so did what went down last Friday. He said, sometimes questions from committee members during these introductions can help expose weaknesses in routing slips and they could die right there. Burt called what happened last week shameful. This was absolutely disgraceful behavior. Quite frankly, uh, the, the acting chairperson went rogue uh, to, to, to use the uh, committee process to sneak this in and then get it approved to become a bill. How irregular is this in a committee? I'm not aware of it ever happening. Now, now I'm, I can say it's never ever happened before, but my understanding is that if both the chair and the vice chair, both of who are out because of COVID, this is that an acting chair doesn't introduce bills without either the chair or the vice chair being present or from what I can tell, even their awareness. This is a total misuse and abuse of the legislative process. And it brings, I think, disgrace to the committee and dishonor to the House of Representatives to have the process manipulated for pure political purposes. This was political theater staged by an acting chair 
um, minutes before we were going to go into recess. The committee process aside, Representative Birch takes just as much issue with the bill itself. I mean, you go through some of this stuff and it calls racist or sexist concepts, things that, you know, any favoritism based on your race or sex is bad or discrimination based on race or sex is bad. And we can all understand that. And that's kind of been the way it's been for a while. But you look a little further down, some of these I kind of wanted to, to understand. And I don't know if you could help me do that. But individuals or institutions cannot or should not treat individuals without regard to race or sex. Is that a transgender thing? Is that how I'm reading that properly? That thing is written so broadly, and I would probably submit so poorly that you can interpret it uh, to mean uh, just about anything you wanted to. The whole idea of this bill, from what I can tell, is to intimidate teachers and school boards uh, from touching upon any subject that might be controversial. This is outrageous. I mean, you can't you can't teach American history. <laughs> you know, without touching upon issues that deal with racism and sexism, like the Civil War, Reconstruction, uh, you know, genocide of, of Native Americans. Why do you think that this, something like this was rushed through like it was? Because someone saw an opportunity to abuse the um, committee process uh, when, uh, you know, when leadership was absent. For that to pass without any questions and being told you can't ask questions, what are we trying to hide? What are we actually trying to achieve here? To me, I personally think that uh, that the educate that the Speaker of the House should, um, you know, should be having a, co a conversation with the members of the Education Committee who thought that this was a good way to conduct business. Birch said he later learned Representative Clow, the committee chair who was homesick with COVID, had no idea this was going to happen while he was away and mere minutes before the House recessed. Birch also said this racist and sex sexist concepts bill seemed nothing more than an attempt to please a base of voters using bud buzzwords pulled from the Internet. Instead, he would like to see more meaningful legislation come through the Education Committee, like trying to fund it adequately or higher pay for teachers or one that addresses class sizes. There's still a lot to be discussed with this racist and sexist bill. Like where are such concepts being taught in Idaho schools? What is this bill trying to achieve? And like Representative Birch said, how can the history of Idaho and the United States be taught without calling out the fundamentally racist and sexist policies and institutions that did exist and in some cases still does exist? Interracial marriages outlawed in Idaho not until 1959. Jim Crow laws? What do you call them if not fundamentally racist? Or how about women not being allowed to vote until 1920? Just an oversight? All good questions, we know, and all we wanted to ask of Mr. Humphreys and Representative Boyle and Representative Clow. None have gotten back to us about this bill and what happened last week, but I'm sure they will be addressed when the Education Committee convenes on April 6th.